Okay, so uh, hello down, everybody. <laughs> I'm Ilya. This is Or. Or. Haggai, unfortunately, is not here. And uh, the title of this talk is Flow-Based Tunneling for SROV using SwitchDev API. So uh, uh, virtualized setup today usually look like this. Linux exposes something called the tab device, which has a net dev on one end and a file descriptor on uh, the other end. QMU takes this file descriptor and uh, uses it to present a virtual uh, net device to the guests. So with this uh, setup, when a guest sends a packet, it appears in the tab. And uh, when a packet is sent through the tab, it appears in the guest. Now, in the hypervisor, we take this tab and connect it to a virtual bridge, which can be a Linux bridge or an OVS bridge. And that way, we control the traffic. The, the bridge can uh, forward the traffic to, from the guest to the wire, or it can drop it or to 42 different guests, OK? Now, to get better performance, we can use something called a uh, virtual function, where instead of the QMU exposing a virtual device, the Nick Harder exposes it. We assign this virtual function to the guest. And then the guest can talk directly to the hardware and set the packets this way. The problem is that we skip the virtual bridge in the hypervisor. And so there's, we can't control the traffic through it. Now, of course, the hypervisor does need to have some control over the packet that the guest sends. So the NIC usually have an embedded switch, which the hypervisor can configure. But the configuration path is totally different. You don't configure it to the virtual bridge in the hypervisor. You configure it to the path. OK, so this is very inconvenient. So what we did is we added something called the WAF representer and configured the A switch in the NIC so that packets from the sent by the guest will arrive to the WAF representer, and packets sent to the WAF representer will arrive to the guest, OK? Exactly like in the case of the tab device. So, so this, this virtual function representer is a critical concept in that We've been discussing in conference for two years, and now uh, I know that John did it, we also did it. That's a critical part to understand the next step. So we have a representer, something that represents a virtual function that can be embedded in the, in the convenient, in the regular uh, virtual switch. And Is it a NetDev? Yes, it's a NetDev. It's, it's a net device. It's a net device that represents the virtual function, uh, and it's sort of slow pass. If you cr transmit a packet to it, it arrives to the VM. If the VM sends a packet and no policy is configured on the embedded switch, it's trapped by the virtual function and appear on the hypervisor. OK, so when, while physically it looks like this, we can conceptually think it, about it like that. So the WAF representer plays exactly the same role as the tap in the para virtual case. And now when I have this setup, I have all the flexibility of a para virtual uh, machine with a uh, SROV. So the, the trouble is this, this causes a bunch of problems to the stack because you're going to have DHCP and all sorts of things trying to bind to that and sending strange packets over to your VM, perhaps. Um, it's OK, but uh, let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> OK, so now I have uh, the same flexibility as Paravirt, but the performance of this are not good. Every packet that the guest sends has to go to, through PCI to the NIC. Then the NIC sends it back. And then I have I'll do all the normal software processing and send it again to the wire, which is slow. And indeed, we call this the slow path. What I would like to point out, though, that it's, this is a very nice point to start offloading, OK? Everything works. I now offload more and more traffic to the hardware. Eventually, most or even everything will be offloaded to the hardware. And then I will get the flexibility of PowerField and the performance of SROIOV, OK? I would also like to point out that the fact that we have to slow path to fall back through is very nice. For example, let's say I send the R packet, and the bridge tells me you had to send it to the wire nine times with nine different encapsulation. So I don't want to do it in Ardo. I can tell uh, the software stack, please do this for me. OK, I need a bit of help with this packet. So, so it's a combined model. We can choose what we know to offload today. We offload what's not. If we don't want to offload, it doesn't worth the effort, or our hardware cannot do it today, it still can still go so slow pass. OK, so of course, this is all nice, but we still have to offload stuff. So we start by offloading in the case that the switch is OVS. So OVS does flow-based forwarding, which is nice for auto offloading. It makes the decision in new space. And the way it does it is that the first packet of new flows 
is directed in a user space daemon called obvious switch with D, and it inserts a cache, uh, an entry to a kernel model, a cache entry, and the, the following packet in the same flow, it is cache entry and are forwarded in the kernel. <coughs> okay, so what do I mean by cache entry? So OVS has a rather complicated uh, representation in user space with multiple bridges. There are many rules per bridge where, with priority. And when a packet arrives, I do the, the classification in each bridge, find the highest priority rule, and uh, then I insert a simple rule into the kernel data path from end to end, for example, from the VAF representer to the wire, and uh, without uh, priorities, okay? So we decided to offload the rules in the right, the simple priority, simple rules, uh, but that's not the only option. Okay, so if we go back to the high-level representation, we have the OVS V3D user space, we have the OVS kernel model sí. that accelerates things in the kernel, and we added the layer below it in the hardware e-switch that accelerates it even more. So we retain the first packet concept where the first packet is handled in user space, and we, then it's cached in the kernel in the hardware, and if we can offload it in the hardware, we do it in the hardware. So, so do you want to know one of the, the problems with this is that it's not really compatible with the real switch. With what? With the switch, like a, a switch that has wildcards. Because because you're you're using the exact match table, it works very well for your NIC. It's, it's, not, it's exact not exact match. match. It's, it's mega flows, maybe not mega in the order you want it, but these are flattened and collapsed rules, right? This but is, they are this not is exact. Very very suboptimal for a switch. Put it that way, and an actual switch will not want to do this. Your, your NIC wants to do this because it has a, a very limiting hardware capabilities in this aspect. Yeah, don't, don't be so sure that we have so limiting hardware capabilities because we did this this way, right? You, so, you so I'm saying if you, if you push this solution, my complaint is it works for your thing, but you need to make sure that you don't just optimize for your specific hardware, which is fair what we're enough, doing here. Fair enough. Jo John, we're presenting something we did. Uh, it's, it's, okay, so it's a we, concept. We, we have a boff after this. We'll deba we can debate it then, so I'll let you get through your slides. Okay, okay so let's do an example of offload. So the VAF driver sends a packet. There is no configuration yet in the e-switch, so it gets to the VAF representer. And again, there is a miss. We send it to the user space daemon. So it throws the packet to the right output and injects a, a, inserts a new rule to the data, data path. We added an hook in OVS to offload this, to ask the ingress port of the flow to offload this flow in the future. Currently, the OVS data path mandates a full match on the ingress port, so this is well defined. So through the VAF representer, we get to our e-switch driver. We verify that the source and destination have the switch, same switch ID, so we can offload this flow. We verify that we support the required match and the required action, and we offload the flow. And the next uh, packet from the same flow goes directly through the, from the VAF driver to the physical port without any software involvement. So, so far, it's the basics, right? I mean, today we want to go further and explain what we do for tunneling. So, so far we show the basic concept of virtual function representers and we, how we do it with OVS and how we offload uh, traffic which is not tunneled. Now we go even, de even deeper and talk about tunneling. Yeah, so uh, the main challenges uh, in offloading tunneling is the way that tunnels are represented in OVS and it's good to contrast it to the way uh, VLAN push and pop work. So in uh, VLAN, you do push VLAN and then output it in the uplink port. On the other end, in tunneling, you do set attributes, if you want to end up, and then output to a special VXLAN V port, okay? There is no connection between this uh, VXLAN port to the uplink. So it's an IP-based tunneling, okay? So uh, when it does in software, it's multi-layered, and then it involves the UDP and the IP stack. That's the main difference from between VLAN-based uh, tunnel. Okay, so the rule lacks both uh, routing information and the layer two information. So we have to obtain this uh, ourselves, but it's worse than that because we have to track changes in those things. Okay, and this uh, problem is especially difficult in DCAP. 
because I said earlier that I want to ingress through the, I want to offload to the, the ingress port, but in the case of Vixen, the ingress port can't offload flows. It doesn't belong to any e-switch. So what we did first was we did a fib lookup to get the real ingress port of the flow. And also, the driver needs to listen to future changes. But uh, this is also not enough. Assume uh, that the packet first arrived through a different device. So we insert rule to the data path, but we can't offload it to the hardware because they are from this one switch. And then due to some uh, configuration changes that the user does, the packets now arrive through the first device. Okay? So now the OVS data path rule didn't change. So I don't get a new miss and a new opportunity to offer the <coughs> flow. And the driver of eSwitch D, of uh, switch ID number zero, doesn't know about this flow and it won't offload it. So what we currently did is we modified the uh, switch dev to be somewhat stateful. We had a switch dev tunnel flow add, which adds uh, rules that come through a VXLAN device, for example. And then we, we so in a real fast instance that we do routing and offload it to the right device. And then we also add it to a sorted data structure that maps outer desk IP to a flow and a offload device and the current offloading device, okay? And now if I get a FIB update, for example, uh, the following IP range is added, I have to go over all the flows in that address range, do routing for each one of those. If there is a current offloading device, I remove it from the previous offloading device and move it to the new offloading device. How much time do I have? No, you have, you have the time. Let's, like, the, like, in the five last minutes, we were discussing, like, how would they say that, the, the empty half of the glass, but this is always with a half of flow. It cannot be that clean, right? So what we're discussing, what happens if a route changes and stuff like that, but uh, questions on the basic concept of tunneling? Someone, is it clear? Someone has questions? Um, Yeah, so, so you actually have to have two uh, interfaces to the application, right? One down to the software vSwitch and one... To the hardware? To the hardware. As, as, uh, okay, as the, the way it was done in this uh, proof of concept, uh, we modified the data pass in the kernel to do the offloading. But yesterday we were discussing other stuff. It seems that the community more goes to a direction where uh, user space controller would program both the data pass and the hardware offload, and that key side, let's say, voice on a policy or whatever. So, but the, I mean, I guess my simple question is, does the application have to pull two interfaces, or does it just see one interface? In this, in this uh, suggestion, only one interface, because they would work with OVS, and OVS internally uh, programs the hardware. You mean application like a controller, or you mean a, application in that case is the virtual switch? No, no. A application is the consumer of the packets. No, the consumer is not aware. Okay, well, that's all right. The consumer in this case is a virtual machine that runs a virtual function, and they, they even don't know that there is a virtual switch and there is tunneling, right? All, all right. So, but the all right, but you have two queues or two. We have two channels because initially the embedded switch. It's 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 a it's a it's a system based on learning. So initially, the hardware data pass is empty and you get a miss, you go to the software pass, then it goes even higher to the, con to the user space daemon, which maybe goes to the controller. They decide to do something, they put a rule to the kernel, and then this rule go goes to the hardware. All right, so does the, does the guest OS have to pull a, uh, a the guest OS? Tap, a tap interface and an SROV uh, virtual interface? No, there's no tap interface the in tap this case. The tap interface is the, the power virtual guests. If you want to have them. So you have two types of guests. You have power virtual guest, yeah. where all this stuff is, is not. By the way, we're looking at that case too. We, we had a session yesterday on virtual switch acceleration, and we're even, well, we're talking now to, to Intel, and we have some ideas how to further accelerate that. But this is an yeah, e switch uh, case where the guest is using virtual function. All right, so what about buffer? So, you, so you're saying then because you know in advance what buffer pool to DMA to? 
Yeah, we yeah. DMA directly to the guest. It has a buff driver. It, tr it talks directly to the hardware and gives it to the... But you said the exception has to go back through the vSwitch. If there is exception, yeah, if, if there is exception in the hardware data pass, like the, the, the buffer gets there, but there's no policy. So the default policy there is miss, which means send it to the hypervisor, and then it goes into the virtual switch, and then it goes to user space. You see, it has two misses, one miss in hardware, another miss in the data pass, go to user space. Then user space configure the data pass, the data pass configure the hardware. Uh, I, I still don't get it. I, the way I see it is there's two interfaces, two buffer pools, yeah, for PCC, and... Yeah, one, two, three. No. Yeah, but the, the idea is that most traffic doesn't go through the buffer representative. It goes directly from the buff driver to the NIC. Only the first packet, the, okay. where you have this miss. Yes, All right. And it's also transparent to them. Okay. So if I understand this right, uh, each zero and your SRV VF have the same MAC address, so there's like one interface exposed externally. And uh, so you're doing your uh, data flow you know, the flows are transferred to your SRV VF only after you learn uh, based on the VF representative that you created. When you mean the external MAC, you mean the, the external MAC on the, on the yeah. overlay packet, on the underlay packet, the, the VXLAN packet? No, I'm just saying that externally from this device, uh, you know, the link partner sees only one MAC address. If you have only one guest, then yeah, it can see on this one. No, I, no, it depends where you're looking. If you look in the tunneled packet, right, it is tunneled with the characteristic of the hypervisor and the, the physical function in the MAC in this, in this case. If you look on the inner packet, it's the, it's the, it's the MAC of the, right. of the, of the virtual I'm function. I'm talking about the non-tunnel case. In the non-tunnel case, you have a single MAC address, and you are saying some of the flows, you want to pass it to the SRIV instead of handling it in your each zero driver. No, in the non-tunnel case, if a guest uses a virtual function, of course, it's externally, they see this MAC of the virtual function. So why do you need the learning? I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding. Why do you need to learn from the VF Be representator? The, the learning is because we want, we want the, the embedded switch to follow on the policy of the controller, right? We, we're not, so, so we start with an empty data pass in hardware. We get a miss, someone program us, and it's, it's unlike you know, physical switches that they learn, uh, let's say, even layer two. This is, this, is, this is a system that has to be programmed. And it's a feature, it's not a bug. We want someone to enforce a policy. Uh, sure. You, for, for us, I mean... If I you want to imitate to... Linux Bridge and you want to learn, we can do that. And you, I mean, that's... Yeah. We can do... If, 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 Yes, but you can have look at Ronnie, but you can still have look and feel as Linux Bridge, unlike the standard uh, SRV and DOs. So, so, so this this paradigm can be used both for what you're saying now for a let's say a Linux Bridge that would would do L2 learning, <laughs> but but it's it's a subset of this idea, which means that someone can program the switch. Right. I mean, this is it, it's pretty interesting. It's you know slightly different, but yeah, I, I get where you're going. Yeah, with the Linux Bridge, we can do the learning in software and then offload the rules in hardware. So we. And we can also, in a way, do learning in hardware if we want to. Yeah. You know, imitate the, the regular legacy SRIOV because we know the, right, we know the guest mark, so we can configure it. Yes. Excuse me? Oh. If you have two virtual machines with the same MAC address, um, and, but they're supposed to be two different tenants. If, if they're using virtual function, it's, it's, you typically would give them Either you don't give them a MAC address and they randomize it, or you provision the MAC address and it's different. Okay, no, but you, you can have uh, two different tenants with the same MAC address. It's OVS's problem, and OVS not, knows how to deal with it. Uh, you, could, you could tunnel it with a different VNI as long as they're in this two different. Yeah, if you do tunnel it's not a problem. Okay, yes, right? we, we support it. The, the idea that we're doing exactly what Open Vswitch want to do. Right, but. So you only get to send uh, the packet uh, to the OpenV switch, right? And that doesn't have an information about... So again, you're assuming that the two different virtual machines there have... Oh, oh I, I think I got your point. We're not only sending the packet. We are, we are sending it to OVS through this representer port, and this representer port is provisioned by OpenStack. They know... Okay. Uh, for them, it's the VM, right? That's, okay, so that's another thing. This, this concept it integrates with the whole bunch of existing infrastructure. 
That's you typically you want to do, right? You want to do evolution and not revolution. So we started, in a way, we started bottom up. We, we planted something down there that everyone above it, it's transparent to them. Okay, so you just don't send the packet, you send the only packet. change we needed to do, okay. because uh, in OpenStack you have two types of node, uh, is it Power Virtual or SRIOV, and this is sort of mixture, so we have some patches to OpenStack to, to, to the Neutron agent to, to deal with that. Okay, and so it, you send It's the very, very low in the OpenStack infrastructure. Okay, and we don't only offload the forwarding, we also offload the NCAP. So in your example, OVS will use different encapsulation with different F VNI, depending on the tenant, and we will do exactly the same in the hardware. We okay. will add an encapsulation and a VNI to the packet. The, the interface name of the VS representer would be different and that, oh, that maybe I wasn't clear, but I have a WAF representer for each WAF. Okay, sure. Right. Virtual function. WAF is how we say virtual function in Hebrew, excuse us. <laughs> we say WAF and PAF, but it's physical function and virtual function. Excuse us for the Hebrew jargon. <laughs> Okay, so we also have uh, an issue with MTU. What do we do if the encapsulated packet might, might exceed the MTU? Okay, uh, we are not exactly sure what open, uh, OVS does about it. We saw that it sometimes fragments the packet. Okay, so what we decided to do is we think that the WAF representer should reflect the WAF MTU, and we only offload the flows if the MTU of the, if the representer has MTU plus an encapsulation header won't exceed the port MTU. Okay, so we, with this approach, we have flow-based offload, uh, which provide, uh, provides SROV performance with power view like flexibility. We show the, the feasibility of this approach with open vSwitch. We, will, oh, we hope it, we can extend it to Linux Bridge. And we hope to offload it, to upstream this uh, work. So a number of open issues we have that we would like to as to we would like you to help us. So uh, there's a question, who should ask the driver to offload the flows, whether it's OVS or is it vSwitchD, through what interface, TC, nothing. What do we do with the decapsulation problem that we showed you earlier? Can we have the stage, stateful switch dev? Or maybe a, a new different uh, <coughs> management model? Or every driver have to keep, keep a list of these flows? Uh, that's it. Questions? Use uh, OVS to do the offloading, uh, like to the, the uplink driver. Yeah. OVS must have a notion of an uplink, right? I'm not sure if it has already. Yeah. It should know which, where does the packet if, if you don't do If you don't do tunneling, if you do tunneling, there is no uplink in OVS, right? Because they go to the IP stack. That is correct, but for the, for the offloading rule has to come to the uplink driver, right? Uplink port. So we do route lookup when we connect between the logical interface of the tunneling endpoint to the IP link, to the, to the uplink, to determine that this IP tunnel goes to something which is routed to the same embedded switch. Okay. You, you see what I mean? In the non-tunnel case, you do have an uplink there, and it's, it's the... Uh, physical function interface can serve as, as an uplink representer in that case. Right. But if you do use tunneling, uh, you, you have a virtual port there in OVS, let's say VXLAN or NVGRE or something. Right. And what Ilya explained that we do part lookup and we link it. Okay. Doesn't. Uh, it seems like doing the, the having the PF do the uplink uh, and have to do a fib lookup is a non-starter, right? Having the the drivers doing routing tasks internally is is really you can do it in the switch. Do you think about it as it being done in the switch dev layer. It's not, it doesn't have to be done in, in the driver. No, it still shouldn't even be done in the switch dev layer. It's a bit of a weird thing. I think we need an abstraction there, and and I'm not sure about abstraction. Abstraction, some kind of a abstraction, right? If we'll end up doing that in user space, so. Some, lo some business logic in user space will do this route lookup and determine, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to make the point. I think the driver has no business doing the routing stuff. 
Okay, so, so yeah, it, we it, agree. It should be in some central. Yes, it's space. in the offloading layer, and the offloading layer is not the driver. We agree, definitely. Anjali. So, do you also do the stats on the VF representer then? Do what? Do you also do the stats on the representer? Stats of as if it was or sent to the VM. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll add that. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> No. Are you going to talk about the para virtualization? No, it's it's currently it's very because today in Linux you have an NDO by the way that was added by Melanox by Ran Benelisha and myself that you could uh, read the virtual the, the the statisticals of the virtual port right. So think that we have already this data we just have to plug it to the. So so there are two types of sites by the way. <laughs> Right. So, so there's types per port and stats per flow that was discussed yesterday. So we, we, we plan to support both of them because um, for aging purposes, you need right. per flow statistics. So, so that's uh, just so that's a whole another party. <laughs> okay. So no more questions. Time's over. Okay. So thank you.